Hello. Hey, are you guys into herbalism? Natural healing? You're wondering about toothpaste? How to make your own? Do you know somebody, hey Tam, do you know somebody who has vertigo? Or do you have vertigo? Do you get nauseous? You're in a car. I know, it's been a while. You can hear my throat. Um, I haven't been around because it's been a long road of recovery kind of for me. Um, Thanksgiving. It's been fighting this since Thanksgiving. I got uh, COVID pneumonia and it attacked my lungs so bad. And of course, you cough a lot. Well, because of that, I form scar tissue on my uh, vocal cords, hence my voice. Um, but usually by the end of the day, it's so tough for me to talk because they get strained. Um, so we're gonna try this early morning on a Saturday and see how it goes. Hi, Anna Banana. I have to say my singing career is over. <laughs> But we could talk about herbs. How are you guys? Yes, it's still not where it should be. Um, I'm hoping that it will. Um, doing a lot of research on herbs for that, of course, the number one that would come to mind would be something like marshmallow root because of the mucilage in it. And, uh, you know, that would coat. Now, don't get me wrong, it does help. <coughs> And I have a, uh, thank you, Anna. And I have a um, really good throat spray that I've made that's 100% natural and it's good for sore throats too. And I use that when it gets really stressed, you know, and I can tell that I'm opening my mouth and nothing's coming out. It does help with that. But I wanna figure out how I reduce that tissue because you know, scar tissue is so thick. Um, and you know, we've got some inflammation in there and so just doing all the things and just trying to figure out sometimes being your own patient isn't the best, but, um, just have to figure out what combination, what percentages, what's going to work best. So we're seeing, you know, but thank you. And thank you all for joining. And the topic today is vertigo. Um, I had one experience with vertigo about a year ago, and it was the scariest shit. I thought I was having a stroke. Um, it was like, I thank you guys for all the likes. Wow, holy crap, you guys already got like a thousand over. Thank you. Um, it was like, um, I couldn't focus and when I say I couldn't focus I may be looking straight here but everything in the room is going like this horizontally just so fast so fast and I'm laying there and it happened first thing in the morning right when I went to get up out of bed and I laid back down and I closed my eyes and even with my eyes closed I felt like my eyes were going really fast like holy shit you know and I really thought am I having a stroke is this what it feels like to have a stroke you know um, because the reason I questioned it was because I've had two grandmothers that had strokes and in talking to them afterwards neither one of them knew they had had a stroke so I'm like okay I'm aware of this this is something else you know so I managed to feel my way because, you know, my eyeballs, because I'm like, what am I, are my eyes doing this or is this internal? Is this just something going on in my head? So I got to the mirror and I trying to focus on my eyeballs and from what I could tell, my eyeballs weren't doing that. So it's something internally that was just going nuts. So um, I ended up laying down, didn't go into work, of course, I wasn't driving and, uh, I'm like, what can I do to never have this happen? I end up going to the 
uh, urgent care after it finally stopped because I'm like, what's going on? So they looked in my ears and they did say I had some clogging in my ears, but they didn't want to remove it because I had just had the vertigo episode and they didn't want to trigger anything. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. So, you know, they told me to get one of those at-home kits, etc., which I end up doing. And yes, a lot of wax did come out of there. And I was just talking to a good friend, Anna, actually on here today and said, you know, I do feel a little bit of heaviness in that same ear again. And uh, I'm going to do another oil. Um, and you can just use mineral oil for that, guys, by the way. If you'd want to use a mullein oil or a garlic oil or anything like that. The biggest key is to let it sit in there, put a little bit of warmth on there while it's there. Warmth as far as like all around in here because you know that, that wax is going, you know, down. But that suction, like the baby nose suc sucker is the most important component of that because you can loosen up that wax all you want. You just need to suck that shit out, you know, excuse my language. But I did get something out anyway. It hasn't happened again, and I wanted to figure out what can I make to help with those things. I've never gotten motion sickness in the past, but because of that crazy movement, the nausea that I had with that episode of Vertigo, I wanted to kind of research and focus on herbs that assisted with that that may be able to help with Vertigo. <clears throat> um, I do have a friend that has vertigo. They were my guinea pig on this, and they did say it did assist them in relieving the symptoms. They use it as needed. We made a tincture, and I want to tell you guys how to make that tincture, what herbs are good for this in the event you or somebody that you know experiences it. There are only four herbs in this, but we're going to talk about them. Um, any questions so far, guys? I, I, I can get on a spiel and just start talking and, you know, start rambling. How are you guys? What are you doing this Saturday? Anything fun? Got a quiet crew here. Don't get too quiet because then TikTok will say they're going to close my live because uh, I have no no activity or something like that. TikTok. TikTok's just a joke anymore. I tell you what, and I know they're probably watching, but guys, you need to you need to tweak your app. It's kind of oh, ooh, good. The truth. I love experimenting. I just love experimenting with just excuse me, an evening tea. You know, things like that. I I love doing that. I'm that person that. Somebody comes over, would you like some tea? <gasps> Please. Look at um, Eyebright, Gloria. Look at Eyebright. It's actually an herb. Actually, I have some right here. Let me mirror this so that you can do a screenshot. I usually, I don't grow this, so I had to purchase this. And I purchased my uh, herbs, the majority of them. I have links. Morning, Cal. I have links in my bio um, of the two suppliers. Of course, Mountain Rose, Her Mount Mountain Rose Herbs are on there, but they take so long to deliver to you. I got tired of waiting on them. I also prefer supporting mom and pop shops. So there's um, two in my link tree that um, help, but I bright. Eyebright herb. It's very good for eye support. Um, also, as the truth mentioned, um, your liver is actually tied to so many things. Everything. I can't even say so many things. It's actually what your liver is going to be affected by everything. Because your liver does hundreds of jobs. I used to have that number off the top of my head. I want to say it's like 500 jobs because everything you eat, drink, and breathe has to be processed by your liver. So every chemical, anything you put on your skin, and I know y'all don't think I'm crazy, but you know, your skin is your largest organ because it does penetrate the three layers of your skin and it's going to go into your bloodstream. 
Well, your blood hits your liver. So that's why I say everything is affected, affects your liver. So it's best to support your liver and um, stinging nettle is a wonderful liver support. But if you just want something that's your first time supporting your liver, something that's very gentle, also a nice diuretic would be dandelion. And this time of year, you can find all sorts of fresh dandelion, which is wonderful. And you can just make a dandelion tea if you don't want to worry about a tincture. A tea would be wonderful with a little lemon in there. And you've got one of nature's best diuretics to flush your system, get rid of excess fluid, water weight in your body. It's very, very good for you. But, so let's go back to um, vertigo. Vertigo, let's talk about blessed thistle. Now this is different than stinging nettle, nettle. This is blessed thistle. Now blessed thistle is, uh, the Latin name is uh, Cincius Benedictus. Now the compound in there, Cincius, I can never pronounce that word, it is what helps with motion sickness. It helps with nerve, the nerves repairing themselves. No, it's not truth. No, it's not. It's, it doesn't have the, um, it's total di different genius there. Um, what was I saying? So it actually helps the nerves repair themselves, which is very, very important in a lot of things. We don't really use Bless Thistle enough like we should because it is very beneficial for the nerves. But it has other properties that can help with many other ailments like flu, the, the colds and flus, herpes, cold sores, boils, scabies, um, deafness. It can even help with deafness on a tea or a tincture level. It can help with liver and gallbladder issues. Um, it's also good for constipation, diarrhea, any type of stomach distress. And when you get lung uh, phlegm accumulation in the lungs, it can also help remove that accumulation of phlegm in the lungs. So the first ingredient that I put in a tincture for vertigo is the blessed thistle. Um, the next thing that we put in there is ginger. Why ginger? Ginger, not only is it great to cook with, it's good for nausea, for upset stomach. And that's one of the things that I experienced when I had the vertigo. And ginger is very, very beneficial for that. And actually it's one of the top three, five herbs for vertigo. So we put the blessed thistle and we have the ginger in there. Good morning, Samaya. Thanks for joining. <clears throat> the next thing is motherwort. Motherwort is one of my favorite herbs um, because number one, it's great for your heart. It can help it helps with, it's an antispasmodic, so it can help with muscle contractions. So if you have abnormal arrhythmias in the heart, mother work can help with that. It's also going to help with um, blood pressure. Um, it's also going to help with uh, your heart rate because of the muscle contractions, the antispasmodic in that. But on the level of vertigo, as I had mentioned, it's an antispasmodic. So, you know, there's some. There's muscles, there's nerves just going crazy. So we've addressed the nerve issue with the blessed thistle, the nausea with the ginger, and so now any type of muscle contractions that could be the cause of this, we're dealing with, um, we're using the motherwort. Also, it's gonna help that blood flow. You know, the blood flow is going to get going, which can cause the dizziness a lot of times. So, because you don't have that good blood flow going on. The last thing that we're going to put in there is ginkgo biloba. Ginkgo biloba is wonderful because it does help increase the blood circulation, hence the dizziness. Um, it's very good in your vitam vitamins. It's chocked full of vitamins. And speaking of vertigo and what else you can do to help with that, number one, your diet. You want to watch on that low, so you want low sodium. And if you notice a pattern here, 
we're talking about blood flow, dizziness. If you ever stood up too quickly and you kind of, you know, that change there, it's the blood flow. Um, too much salt can cause high blood pressure. So high blood pressure, the dizziness, see where that's all kind of connecting and we're trying to attack this at different angles. Um, there's not one herb that's going to fix everything, so that's why I like to use multiple herbs. The same way in my kidney flush tincture. Um, I don't just want to worry about getting rid of the stones. I also want to worry about what can we use within that tincture that is a natural antibiotic to help with any inflammation or any type of antibacterial issues that you may be dealing with. I also put an herb in there for that helps soothe and it coats that urea so that when those stones are coming out, it's easier on you. It also have something in there to help with the pain because those stones have jagged edges in there. So it's we have a um, an herb in there to help that. Also, we have dandelion in there because as I had mentioned just a little while ago, when we were talking about liver supporting herbs, dandelion's a wonderful gentle herb that will increase the urination because if you're getting rid of a kidney stone, you want that to happen as quickly as possible. So we have multiple herbs in, in that tincture to address on all different angles of the issues somebody's going to experience so that it happens quickly, painlessly. We're dealing with, you know, any antibacterial issues and the stones getting broken up. Um, so back to the vertigo, that's the same concept. We're addressing each one of those symptoms. So regarding the ginkgo biloba, it has so many benefits on vitamins and minerals, but I did want to say, on the diet, low sodium. You also might want to think about taking a CoQ10 on that also. Um, calcium, get your calcium up. Vitamin D is very good for those who have vertigo. Fortunately, the majority of people in the United States are low on vitamin D, but it clinically it's showing that a lot of people with vertigo do have very low numbers in vitamin D. <clears throat> so overall, this, this tincture is going to be very beneficial. Um, as far as the herbs, like I said, they're all going to attack it in multiple ways. And does anybody have any questions at all? And you guys are such an easy crowd, man. I'm going to take you guys out on first dates. You wouldn't ask for much. Be easy on the wallet. Not a lot of jabbering. Jeez, you guys are great. All right. The next thing I wanted to talk about is, if I can open this, yes. Toothpaste. Have you ever made your own toothpaste before? So, years ago, the big push was, well, thank you very much, Kels. I, gosh, you guys are up to 6.9. Man, thank you for all those taps, man. I appreciate that. <clears throat> so, toothpaste. They used to push fluoride. They put fluoride in the water, and I believe they still do to this day, but we have found through over time that fluoride really isn't that great for us right and I'm going to be 58 in a few months and I remember being in grade school and they gave us these pink pills to chew up and they were our fluoride pills yeah just just poison a generation right <laughs> so I've started steering away from um, the regular crest and all those toothpastes and I've made my own and I make them in these little tins. I do not sell this but I wanted to share with you guys what it is. It is a powder consistency. Now it's a little clumpy there because I added cinnamon to it because I wanted this to have a flavor but I'm going to show you guys the ingredients um, on how I make this because it's so easy. How you use it, you just wet your toothbrush 
and you just put your toothbrush on there to get a little bit in there and you go ahead and brush your teeth as you normally would and you can make it any flavor that you would like i've made mine cinnamon cinnamon you could use sweet orange you could do peppermint you could do wintergreen spearmint you could do grapefruit lemon whatever your heart desires you could do um but so let's talk about what's in here um this is the pure brand and this is let me turn my screen around so you guys can see this this is calcium carbonate this is a food grade ground limestone now this is going to help me remineralize your teeth help with the enamel structure support the enamel it's also going to be a very very light abrasive in there um it's Definitely very, very good for the teeth. The next thing we have is plantain leaf extract. Now I bought this from Bulk Poth Carry. What the plantain leaf extract is, is they have taken the plantain leaf, which is wonderful for its antimicrobial, antibacterial, antiviral, all the antis, and if you if it grows out in your yard and if let's say you get stung by a bee and if you were to find that plantain you take the leaf you just pop it in your mouth chew it up a little bit get your own saliva in there pop that on that bee sting it's going to number one it's going to take care of the pain because plantain helps pain um, also it's going to be a drawer out it's going to help heal it because it has all those anti compounds in it so this is by bulk apothecary and what they have done is they've actually taken an extract of plantain leaves and they powdered it so i just buy the powder you can do this yourself um if you would want to make an extract but i didn't have the time so I just bought it, but it's plantain leaf extract in powdered form. So why are we putting that in there? Because it does have all those wonderful benefits for your mouth. Pain, antibacterial, antimicrobial, antiviral, wonderful for your teeth. The next thing is I have a bentonite clay, but this is calcium food grade. Now, again, this is going to help with the remineralization of the enamel. Um, it can actually get rid of the toxins. It's healing. Not only can you use this for your toothpaste, you can use it for a face mask. Um, and it's food grade, so you can do all sorts of things with this. You can do a detoxifying bath with this. Thank you, Samaya. That was so sweet of you. Thank you for the likes, guys. Damn, you guys are little peckers today. <laughs> so, bentonite clay. I prefer the calcium just to help um, give an additional boost to the remineralizing of the enamel. Yes, Alma. Hi, how are you, sweetheart? And lastly, that's it. That's what we got. Then this, the um, essential oil, as I'd mentioned. Now, that's what I put in the one that I just shared. Um, I did have, I take that back, I did have one more item I put in there, and that was an aluminum-free baking soda. More or less for a whitening agent and for a mild abrasive to help clean off that tar and, and junk off of your teeth. Um, but you could put activated charcoal in there. I have done that in the past and um, it's just so messy to work with. Activated charcoal, you just get a tiny little bit of activated charcoal on something and now you've got a mess everywhere. It's like, how did that one little speck of black get all over my face, my hands, it's on my table, it's on my shirt? It like goes everywhere. I, I, but it's great for your teeth. It really is. So you can put 
activate a black charcoal in your toothpaste. I did see your comment on the food poisoning. I hope you're feeling better. Maybe try some ginger tea if I'm sure you've done all those things because you're wonderful at that. I hope you feel better. So that's um, basically when you're making your toothpaste, it's equal parts. So in a container like that, I did a half a teaspoon um, of each in there. And then as far as getting it to the way you want to, to taste, that's up to you. Start out adding a few drops, shake it to disperse that. You know, kind of put your finger in there and add a little bit more. Um, another idea if you were going to do peppermint, Bulk Apothecary also has a, um, yes it is, it can help with the stomach. Gloria, you are right. Um, Bulk Apothecary also has um, a peppermint extract that you can do a powdered form of that too. Um, so a lot of options there um, on what you could do. Um, of course, you could use natural fruit powders, but you'd want to be mindful of the color of those fruit powders. You wouldn't want to stain your teeth red from strawberries and things like that. So you definitely need to think the whole process through, most definitely. Um, next, guys. You guys are like so easy today. Not a lot of feedback. It's going to be easy peasy. We are going to impregnate. We're going to impregnate some surface with some mushrooms. And we are going to do cordyceps mushrooms. So cordyceps mushrooms I throw. And we're getting ready to do another batch. These are some cord. Hi, Mish. How are you, sweetheart? These are some cordyceps mushrooms that I have dried already. And uh, you can tell at one time they were orange as they've dried. They've lost their color. But they are long and stringy. You wouldn't think that would be a mushroom. But it is. I'm mirrored, so I'm all backwards. <clears throat> So we are going to start a new growth. If you have any um, usnea, that may help you, Alma. <coughs> <coughs> My vocal cords start to get a little stressed. <coughs> So when you order a grow kit, it comes with this surface here, and I do see that it is kind of whopper jawed on the bottom, but I cannot touch that. I'm not going to put anything in there to straighten it out because this has to be a perfectly perfect environment. If I get my bacteria or anything on my fingers in there, it could affect the growth of my mushrooms and I don't want to do that so I'm going to leave that kind of whopper jawed kind of looks like a rice cake you know those uh Quaker rice cakes doesn't it it's rice and something else I don't know now then at the top of here I have a little black plastic plug and I'm going to show you what that's for and then that white little circle there is where air and oxygen is going to get in to help those mushrooms. Now, after I get done impregnating this little jar here, um, it's going to go into the complete dark, no light whatsoever for about seven to nine days. <clears throat> and then after seven to nine days, I can take it out and let it finish their growth process. But they have to start in the dark. Um, so, in this kit, it comes like this. Then you get this little package here. And it comes with a alcohol pad. And we're going to clean off the top of this, mainly this right here. And it comes with a syringe. And inside that syringe, there is the, um the mushroom spores. 
Alright, so let's get this needle all set up. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Here we go. So I twisted the top off of that. Okay. When I put the needle on there, we're gonna take the ne needle, can come off. It's a very big gauge. You can see some of them spores kind of came out of there a little bit. i put that back on. I'm gonna get this alcohol pad out. The rubber stopper here, we're going to completely wipe that off. Now that we're gonna take this needle, and hey Michelle, how are you? And we are going to plunge that in here. And we're going to start shooting. Now when you do this, I just don't want to shoot down. I want to be able to spread those spores all the way around so when I'm plunging it, I'm actually going to be moving it a lot slower while I'm watching what I'm doing. And I'm going to try to get this on video. All right, so we're down to the bottom there. We plunged that all over. Put our lid back on. Stick that in there, throw that in there. We're gonna dispose of this safely. Have you guys ever had cordyceps mushrooms before? Cordyceps mushrooms are wonderful for your health. They provide energy. Um, cordyceps mushrooms have been used by athletes because they are a natural energy. Um, that's why I use it in my Mushroom 5, because we need energy. It helps boost your energy. But aside from energy, cordyceps mushrooms are wonderful for the heart, for the blood flow within the body, for muscles. It's very good for your muscles. Um, it's a cancer fighter. So there are a lot of great benefits from the cordyceps alone. But since we are talking about mushrooms, please check out my website. It's timetoheal.net. In my link tree up here, if you go to my main page, I have a link tree. And it has the main link to my website. But there are also individual links for some of the product, Mushroom 5. It actually has seven different mushrooms. And I grow the mushrooms here. Um, it has mataki, which is great for, it has clinical studies showing it fights breast cancer cells. It has shiitake mushrooms in there, which are wonderful for overall health. It has the cordyceps. It also has lion's mane in there, which is great for brain health. It's good for memory, mental acuity. They've done a lot of studies with lion's mane for dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, it also has reishi mushrooms. It has cordyceps, mataki, shiitake, chaga mushrooms in it also, and turkey tail. Hey, them farms, what's up, man? How you doing? So, check out the Mushroom 5. We've got our cordyceps mushrooms started. We've impregnated our rice patty. And um, this is going to go in the dark 
for nine days, seven to nine days. Um, if in seven days I see some great progress in the mushrooms starting to, to grow, then I may take it out. But if not, it's going to stay in there for the four or nine days. And then afterward, it can come out, but you don't want to use, oh yes, use Kells 10, I believe, and at Kells 10 for 10% off. If you would like to use that code, please do. Um, but it's either Kells or Kells 10. Try either one. Um, but good stuff here, guys. Um, check out Cordycep Mushrooms. Um, all mushrooms. Look at mushroom therapy, friends. It's, I can tell when I don't take it. You know how, um... Some days you just struggle with being able to multitask. I know when I'm at work, I've got, I've got a stressful job. I do have to try to be very focused on things, get interrupted a lot, get interrupted a lot, and be able to jump back onto what I was doing because I may be on a deadline. And even though I'm on a deadline, it doesn't mean that all the work that I do to keep the lights on, basically, has to stop. No, it still keeps on going, you know. Um, but... When I take my Mushroom 5, I can do all that. I'm not sitting there going, what did I do? I walk away from my 9 to 5 job knowing, damn, that was a productive day. I got shit done. I walk, walk away instead of those days when I don't take it and I feel like I'm that hamster just going around in the little wheel. I'm working, but I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere. I don't see the productivity, you know. So look at mushroom therapy. It really, really does help you. And it's just really good for fighting those free radicals in our bodies that can cause so many things. It does help mind fog. Yes, it does. It sure does. So we started our cordyceps today. Um... Tomorrow, if you guys are around, I'm going to do a live. We're going to get the lion's mane started. And lion's mane is wonderful for that brain health. A hundred percent. And between the cordyceps and the lion's mane, they are my favorite. Not only because of what they do, but look at that cool picture of them. The lion's mane. They're like fuzzy. They're like fuzzy like a lion's mane. They're so cool. Uh, to a cat? Oh, yeah. Of course. Yes, most definitely. Wouldn't be hurtful. Of course, you'd have to adjust your dosage accordingly. Wouldn't be the same as an adult, but yes. Yes, it would be good. Um, and I don't know if they're on any medicines. So that would be another, you know, thing to research. Miss Saraja, thank you, but I'm not doing it. Um, battles. Mushroom 5 coffee. I made, it's not out there anymore. I sold out of it. And I don't think I'm going to be bringing it back because it, I had to charge like $30 for a bag of it. But it was a nice size bag. But, um, definitely broke even on it. Maybe didn't even make anything off of it at all. At all. I might have lost. But it was Mushroom 5 peppermint cocoa. 100% natural. 100%, 100% natural sweetener. It had stevia leaf extract in there, not stevia that's processed in the stores or all that crap. 100% um, natural all the way, and it had the mushroom five powders in there. It was good. Peppermint cocoa, it had cacao in there, so it's a natural chocolate. It was good. Yes. It was good. It came out in December. I sold it around Christmas time for that peppermint chocolate Christmas vibe, you know. It was pretty good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, tomorrow we'll do the lion's mane. I'll show you how I go about setting up my grow kit with lion's mane. My goal this summer is I want to get away from buying the kits. I want to make my own kit. I want to figure out what exactly is, is is in this rice patty thing? What do these mushrooms need? For the lion's mane, what is in that block? 
you know is it sawdust what do we need so i want to start actually thank you very much mish i appreciate that so much and michelle i appreciate all your gifts too sweetheart thank you yeah i think it would be cool and you know um if i just had to buy the spores that would be much better um i did find where i can buy my own things like this but why limit myself to this size if i'm going to buy the spores and make my own rice patty base why can't i put it in a bigger you know what i'm saying I do more of them you know what i'm saying so yeah it's kind of what I'm looking at. If I master it, maybe I'll grow it, sell my own kits. Because these kits, I know they're taking people for a ringer. They're expensive. And I just feel that I could sell them for a lot cheaper. Sorry, something was in my eyes. So that's something that I'm looking at. Um, trying to do. You know. The old vocal cords are <clears throat> get raspy. So with that being said, does anybody have any questions? Because <coughs> I am probably going to hop off here. I'll be on tomorrow. Probably about the same time, same place. And we'll do the mushrooms that lions made. You guys have yourself a wonderful day. I'll see you later. Stay healthy, friends.